In the sci-fi film The Matrix, human civilization is trapped in a virtual world created by machines, a vast city built out of nothing but computer code. This is the aquatic version of The Matrix, created by neuroscientists in Massachusetts. To a zebrafish, the repeating lines are currents in a river. As the lines fly past, the fish frantically flicks its tail to counter the current. Florian Engert and his team at Harvard are using zebrafish and the matrix to learn about the brain. Baby zebrafish are tiny and transparent, which makes them ideal animal models. At five days old, the baby fish is four millimeters long. Its brain holds just a few hundred thousand neurons. That's big enough for complex behaviors, but small enough that you can see all of the individual cells under a microscope. To watch the brain in action, the researchers use genetically engineered fish whose neurons glow green when they fire, a technique called calcium imaging. First, the team tried imaging the fish while they were swimming freely, but their wiggling brains messed up the data. The matrix setup means the fish can be paralyzed. Here, Two glass pipettes hold the fish. The other two pipettes are plugged into bundles of motor neurons in its tail. When the projector is switched on, the fish tries to swim against the virtual current. It can't actually move, but its intention is recorded from the activity of its motor neurons. At the same time, the researchers watch to see which areas of the brain light up. To test theories about how the brain adapts to changes in the environment, the researchers can make the lines move faster or slower. In the brain, they found particular sets of neurons light up when something unexpected happens, like a suddenly strong current. This enables the fish to adjust its movements, a behavior called motor adaptation. Last year, the team systematically zoomed in on different parts of the brain until they had tracked the activity of all 300,000 neurons as the fish were fictively swimming. This is the first whole brain picture in any living animal. With any luck, the approach will lead to new fundamental principles of how brain circuits interact with one another in every animal, including us.